Hey, business building warrior. This is Jim with Silent Sales Machine Radio. Welcome to another brand new episode. Thank you so much, as a side note, for spreading the word. This show continues to rocket up the charts. New listener, listeners constantly coming on board simply because you're spreading the word. We have a $0 marketing budget for this show. Actually, this podcast is the only marketing we do for our community. We've grown by word of mouth over the past 20 years to serve over 10,000 coaching students at this point. Even more than that, people who have taken our proven Amazon course. So many great success stories over the years, and it's all been organic word of mouth. And we're so proud of that fact because we rely on you sharing your success with others as our best marketing. So thank you for that. Thank you for sending people to silentgym.com, which is the only website you'll ever need if you want to share this show with others, or if you want to find the resources that we offer to our ever-growing community. And speaking of ever-growing community, you know, I want to eliminate some excuses today. This is another one of those episodes that's going to leave you very, very uncomfortable, potentially, because if you're in the camp that says, well, I just don't know if this Amazon thing's for me. I've heard some stuff. I've heard a few things here and there. And I saw somebody was struggling over there. Well, I'm going to basically beat you up for a few minutes and challenge you that you are potentially ignoring, walking away from, or paying less attention than you should be to what is arguably the greatest business opportunity of our time. And no matter what angle you want to look at this thing from, I can show you examples of people who are more than overcoming those challenges. They are thriving in spite of the challenges that you might want to throw at us. And if you've listened to many episodes around here, you've kind of noticed a theme. What we do is we destroy excuses here. So maybe your excuse is, well, I know a guy who knows a person whose account was suspended and I'm nervous. Or, well, I know a guy that thought he was making money and turns out he wasn't actually making much money at all. Or I know a guy who's got a garage full of inventory. I know a guy who tried drop shipping. I know someone else who did X, Y, or Z. They're not following the systems that we teach here. People who find themselves off the road in a ditch with Amazon have simply not been following the systems we teach here. With thousands and thousands of students, there are virtually zero exceptions to what I just said. I'll start here. We've had, like I said, thousands and thousands of students take our courses, content, and training. I'm still aware to this day of fewer than a handful of permanent suspensions. Yet somehow that theme floats to the top of the conversation in virtually every arena where Amazon's ever discussed. Now, I am fully aware of people who tried to sell counterfeit or people who ignored and blatantly disregarded Amazon's policy in certain arenas and found themselves suspended and in rough positions, but those weren't our students. We teach our students to wade in very slowly, to earn Amazon's trust, to pay attention to the details, to use proper receipts from proper retailers, for example. There's a lot of confusion about the receipts issue for some reason. We've been very clear on the issue for, I don't know, eight, nine years. If you're shopping a legitimate retail store, a legitimate receipt is all you need. If you're shopping somewhere that sells closeouts, liquidations, and possibly counterfeits, well, a receipt from them is not going to help you if Amazon challenges you on the legitimacy of your inventory. It's a nuanced conversation, perhaps, but it's certainly not complicated. Yet we see these issues pop up frequently as excuses for people not to get into Amazon, where on a, I can say safely, a daily basis in our free Facebook group, there's a link at silentgym.com to that group. On a daily basis, we're hearing from new sellers, new students who are waiting in nice and slow. They've spent less than a few hundred dollars on all tools, courses, training, inventory, everything. And they're posting their success stories and their momentum. You're also hearing from people hitting their first $10,000 a month, their first $30,000 a month. We've had an interview with someone who just hit $100,000 in three months of sales, all at great margins. Am I saying we can guarantee this will happen for you? No, absolutely not. I can guarantee it won't happen for you, actually, if you're not willing to step into the process that we've created and start doing the work. It's work. Anything worth having, blood, sweat, tears, sacrifice, risk, discipline, patience, paying attention to the details, doing what must be done, when it must be done. That goes into having success in any area of life, including building a business on Amazon. 
Am I saying it's 100% smooth sailing if you pay attention to the details? No, you are going to have speed bumps. You are going to stub your toe and bump your head. It will happen in anything worth doing. This is no exception. But if you follow the system, if you pay attention to the things that we're teaching around here, you definitely can build a beautiful business. There are several factors that go into this. The big premise today, however, is you are probably overcomplicating things. I'm going to tell you exactly what I mean by that and illustrate why I believe now is the best time to get into Amazon and some of the things you're probably doing to overcomplicate things or make it more difficult than it really should be. And that's probably going to be the title of today's episode. You are overcomplicating Amazon. If you're not succeeding on Amazon yet, it's because you're overcomplicating it. You're thinking it's way more difficult than it really is. Perhaps the greatest proof of that statement that I could provide to you is the dozens, hundreds actually, of success stories from students of our proven Amazon course. We've interviewed them on this podcast. Scroll back in time. We're approaching 800 episodes of this podcast at this point. The vast majority of them are success story students who've built beautiful businesses doing the stuff we teach here. There's no other podcast in e-commerce that does that, to my knowledge. There's some great podcasts out there. I listen to them and I enjoy them. Some of them probably even do have dozens or hundreds of success stories. You'd never know it though, because they feature one every four or five months at best. Here we feature two, sometimes even three brand new success story students from our community every single week. And that's just the ones who are have the courage and have the... the uh, willingness to step forward and share their story. There's many, many, many others that don't have that willingness. Maybe they'll put a post in our Facebook group where, by the way, we have 1,900 at this point, approximately success story posts in our Facebook group. Again, there's a link at silentgym.com to that Facebook group. You should definitely get over there and join us and check it out for yourself. Just scroll through the images and you'll see, every once in a while, you'll see people posting the statistics, the stats on their business, what, how it's going. And yes, when people ask, what's your net margin? We're prepared to answer that because we all know $10,000 worth of sales in a month is not $10,000 of profit in your pocket. Of course not. Of course it isn't. Come on. We know that revenue isn't net profit. We're smart enough about business to realize that. So we always ask and people always share on our podcast as well. People always share the exact details of their business, the struggles, the blood, sweat, tears, the, the bad decisions they've made, and yes, the victories and the way the business has changed their life. In some cases, I mean, we've had recent episodes of people who were had back surgery for multiple traumas to their back and were on a couch for 18 months and built an incredible business while they were on their back. What other business opportunity out there affords that kind of wide open door that anybody can walk through if you're willing to do the work? The future trends look beautiful. Online shopping is rocketing upward. Amazon is growing quarter after quarter after quarter, the number of people who are shopping and relying on their services, the resources that they're pouring into staying way ahead of the competition. Amazon, if you weren't aware, if you haven't listened to many of our episodes, they get about half of all the business online every day in the United States. Half of all economic activity on the internet is Amazon approximately every day. You add up eBay, Walmart, all the Shopify stores, all the other players in the game they add up to less than what Amazon consumes in the space and they are growing. So you hear us talk a lot, a lot about Amazon around here, not because we're all big fans of Jeff Bezos, not necessarily, although it's an impressive business he's built, the most successful profitable business in the history of the world. Well, that's nothing to, to you know ignore, right? But it's an opportunity for you. At the heart of this community is wanting you to succeed Maybe your goal is just to have more money. I mean, that's a pretty shallow goal. For most people, their goal is something like, I want to have more freedom in my day. I want to be able to take my kids places when it's a nice day outside. I want to be able to enjoy uh, nice vacations. I want to be able to take care of my parents. I want to be able to travel when, when the opportunity arises. I want to be able to be there for people that I love who are struggling right now. I don't want to be gone 60 hours a week. I'd rather be home. I'd rather be around the people I love. Those are the kind of goals that we like helping people meet. At the core, at my heart, is seeing dads get to come home. If a dad wants to be home and he'd rather be there with his family, do like what we did, homeschool their kids, I'd love to help make that happen. What's the best avenue I have to help make that happen? 
teach them how to sell on Amazon. There's a need for many, many, many more educated sellers, thousands, tens of thousands more. The future growth curve is ridiculous for e-commerce, and we need a lot more people who understand the basics. So if saturation is the excuse you've been leaning on, well, let me just snatch that one off the table real fast. I've already shared some details with you about the growth of Amazon. Did you know that e-commerce still represents less than 20% of all economic activity retail in the United States? Less than 20% of retail is online. Did you hear that? Write it down somewhere. Think about what that means. Your impression is probably that 40, 50, 60, or even 70% are some of the numbers I've heard people guess of economic activity in the US is e-commerce. That's simply not true. This is US government data. You can look it up. Somewhere around 16 to 18. I've seen numbers as high as 20% recently of all economic activity is online. That number is going to be higher, 25, 30, 35, 40 in the coming 5, 10, 15 years. It's exploding. And who's going to own the lion's share of that if things continue with the trajectory we're on now? Amazon is. That's why we teach it. That's why we say it's wide open. That's why we say saturation is a laughable, uh, let's say, philosophy or uh, hypothesis or excuse. It just doesn't make any sense. We see new people stepping in constantly and thriving. For every good seller that comes along and does things the right way, there's five or 10 others that come along, stumble through, give up, do something really poorly thought out. They try to get into private label and launch their own product, for example, crash and burn with a garage full of inventory they can't sell, and then blame Amazon as the problem and get online and complain, yeah, I tried Amazon and I lost $60,000. Well, yeah, because you didn't do it the right way. The way we teach, there's absolutely no scenario in which you lose a lot of money. I'll say it again with more clarity. The way we teach Amazon, it is impossible for you to lose a lot of money. Your worst case scenario as you're choosing your inventory is typically break even at worst once you understand the system. So if you're losing tons of money on Amazon, you are not following the systems that we teach here. We teach you to wait in nice and slow, to go very thin on your inventory across multiple possible ASINs or listings on Amazon. We call it inch deep, mile wide. So you're thinning out your risk. You never have more than a few units of any given ASIN. You don't go out and say, ooh, that's on sale. I'm gonna buy 300 units and save 10%. You don't ever do that, especially as a new seller. You're finding stuff that you can source at full price, a few units at a time, and expect to, at worst case scenario, break even, best case, sell at a nice profit. You may say, well, Jim, how often does that really happen, You know, where you can buy stuff at full retail and, and actually sell it for a nice profit? Well, it happens all the time. We've got thousands of people making a living doing this. We've taught this strategy to a lot of people. And initially, it may not make a lot of sense to you until you see it play out. Speaking of seeing it play out, over the past couple of weeks, I'll stick a link to this in the show notes, by the way, what I'm talking about now. But over the past couple of weeks, I've gone into my personal Amazon account just randomly throughout the day as time allows. And I'll look for a recent example from the past few minutes or hours of an item that we're selling on Amazon. I take a picture of the Keepa chart and I pop it into the Facebook group and I say, hey guys, here's the product we bought. Here's what we paid. Here's what it's selling for. Here's what the Keepa graph looks like. Here's how we made the decision. And look, in all the examples that I've used, this is an important distinction because I'm not just grabbing random products. I'm grabbing ones that, that meet a certain profile because I'm trying to make a point here. In all the examples I've grabbed, I've grabbed over 40 at this point in the past couple of weeks. All of them, the sell price on the product is well above buy box. If you don't know what that means, let me explain a little bit. Buy box is Right now, if you get on Amazon and you're shopping, it's the default price that Amazon gives you for that product. That's called the buy box. Amazon says, hey, we see this. You're shopping for this product. Here it is for $29. Sitting right there. All you got to do is click, add to cart, boom, you bought it. If you look, though, there's probably 5, 10, 15, 30 other sellers, and you can scroll around and see, oh, look, some of them are priced a little lower, but it would take three weeks to get here. Oh, some of them are priced a little higher and it would get here faster. Some of them are priced higher and it would take longer to get here. Why that is? Well, because that shopper is just hoping that other people run out of inventory or the buy box rotates and shows their price in the buy box at some point, 
Or if you've listened to podcast episode 554 of this show, you understand that Amazon is not one big warehouse where millions of price sensitive shoppers descend to find the best deals. That is not what Amazon is. Now they present themselves as that, but that's not what they are. Amazon is nearly 200 warehouses spread out across the entire United States. And in many cases, I'll take my own wife, for example, we may be having some people over and we got everything ready. The house looks great. We've been cleaning all day. We took care of all the little details, put up some new decorations. We got all the food ready. And oh no, this one little item that we absolutely must have. It's noon right now. And everyone's coming over at four. We got to have it. Do we send Jim out for an hour and a half to run to a store, Walmart, find it? They don't have it, Target, maybe no. Or do we hop on Amazon real quick and say, do they have this item? Look, they do. Prime now, two-hour delivery. Awesome. Are we price-sensitive shopping at that point? No. I live in central Indiana. Am I going to buy that item from someone in Atlanta, Georgia, or someone in Miami, Florida, or someone in San Francisco, sitting in products sitting in their warehouse where the, where the best price is? I could have it three days at the best price. No. That's not how I'm shopping on Amazon. I'm saying, who has it close enough that they can get it to my house without me having to get in my car? There's one, maybe two units sitting close enough. The Amazon Prime can grab it and get it to my house. That's the one we buy. That's how we make sales out above buy box all day, every day. Fast moving products sell above buy box all day, every day on Amazon. And until that makes sense, you're going to find yourself saying things like this. As a new seller, you'll be saying things like this. I can't find anything profitable to sell on Amazon. Everything's selling for the same price on Amazon as it is on Walmart. Yes, because you don't understand how Amazon works yet. You don't understand that like I just provided 40 examples. There's a link in the show notes today to those 40 recent examples in real time of my account where I'm selling items above buy box, consistently selling items for more money. It, take, it makes no logical sense until you understand Amazon's regional. How is it possible that I'm sitting in there, to use one random example, I'm selling an item for $27. We've sold five in the past couple of weeks for $27 of this item. They cost me, if I remember right, $10, something like that. This unit, we can buy as many as we want anytime we want. We're only selling about one or two a week. So we send in one or two a week with our shipments. Nice, steady pace. I've got a large catalog of ASINs products just like this, by the way. That's that's how my business, my replens business on Amazon runs. So why are people buying it from me for $27 when the buy box has never been above $21, $22? Never. It bounces around $21 to $22. And that's where most sellers are on that product, $21, $22. They're all competing, trying to be the lowest price, beating each other by a penny, $21, $21, $19.99. They're all competing in that little pink line on the Keepa chart is bouncing around $20, $21. And here I am making a sale every week or so at $27. And I'm happy to be there. I'd rather make $7, $8 profit per unit than sell three a day and make 50 cents a unit, right? I would just rather do that. I don't want to have that rapid churn knowing that I've got to send in a lot to keep my inventory up. And that's just a lot more work for my team. It's just a lot more stuff to ship it's a lot more inventory sitting there if the price for some reason does really drop. Let's say Amazon goes and buys 30,000 units of this thing and cuts the price in half for everybody temporarily, typically, when they do that. What then? Well, I'm stuck with five or six units. The people who were selling you know, eight a day at a super low price, barely profiting, well, now they've got maybe, let's say, 100 units on hand. They've just lost a lot. So I'm playing a slower paced game that requires less work, that puts more profit in the bank on each unit, and I'm not stuck with a bunch of bad inventory. And by the way, you're welcome because I'm encouraging the buy box to go higher on all of those ASINs. And quite often the buy box does start to climb. Other sellers are saying, wow, how is it that guy's making occasional sales at that price? I think I'll go up there and join him. And the price slowly creeps up. You don't see these sales appear on a keep a chart anywhere. You're not going to see Amazon telling you, hey, by the way, this seller with a high price, he's doing really well. He's selling a lot of units at that higher price. No, Amazon wants you to push the price lower. They want to send you all these signals, hey, push the price down, push it down, push it down. You don't have to. 
You simply don't have to on fast-moving ASINs. Go listen to podcast episode 554 to learn that lesson. So you're making it overcomplicated. That's the theme today. Hopefully, I'm starting to drive this point home. If I was just one guy out here talking with his theory and his one Amazon account, maybe I'd be worth listening to, maybe not. I don't care if you do or don't like me. I don't care if my voice and tone and pace and illustrations resonate or not. I'm talking about helping you meet your family and life goals financially through the best mechanism that I have available to me. I don't have an opportunity to get to know you and your, your gifts and your talents and where you're positioned and what other opportunities you have in your life. All I know is if you're willing to listen and put in the work, I can help you build a beautiful business. Maybe this is the right business for you. Maybe it's not. But this is the lowest common denominator business opportunity in the world today, hands down, bar none. If there's something better, hey, we're going to teach it. We love e-commerce because we can put our business in our pocket. I can travel anywhere in the world. My multiple income streams can all be controlled from a single device or any internet connection in the world. And I can just keep right on living my life with my family, flexibility. I want that for you. I take this very personally because I know we live in a time of great cultural decline. Family is under attack. If we can, I was talking to one of our leaders just the other day, a few of us have had this conversation recently. I think what we do around here is we save marriages, we save families, we make it possible for them to have the financial means to relieve stress, which is the greatest stress most marriages have is financial. If we can help relieve that, alleviate that without creating more separation in the family, but getting them under the same roof, in many cases, doing the business together. Those are the reasons I love this. I don't love e-commerce because I get to play with computers. I love e-commerce because I see it helping families meet very real goals, helping turn some of those biggest challenges they face into checks they have to write, removing the stress from those scenarios. So whatever your excuses are, you're giving them too much power right now. Let me just say this, you know, whatever it is that's holding you back, whatever that excuse is, I don't know if it's a person, maybe you're intimidated by Amazon, maybe you're, you're fearful of something, you've handed control of your future over to a third party. It could be that excuse. It could be uh, Amazon itself. It could be all the distractions. It could be entertainment. You've handed power of your future over to entertainment because you'd rather watch Netflix three or four hours a day versus building the business of your dreams and doing something significant. So I'm providing you as much evidence as I possibly can. Hundreds of podcast interviews, 1,900 people in our Facebook group saying this works. The statistics that are in our favor, the big demographic shifts that are happening that give this industry a very bright future. What else can I do to convince you that this is worth a shot? I'm not sure what else I could do. I actually, to be completely honest, I'm sometimes confused at the people who say, yeah, 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 I like that, but I just don't know. I don't know if I'm feeling it. I'd, I, you know, I've always wanted to kind of like, you know, try to start a, a poetry blog, you know, like, okay, that's great. Start your poetry blog, have fun, call it a hobby. If it monetizes someday, beautiful. I hope it does. But there's 8 million poetry blogs out there that have never made a penny. And of the two or three that maybe did, it didn't last very long. And of the one or two people you know of that did great with it long-term, man, they had a lot of other things going in their favor and a lot of other momentum. They were a world's foremost recognized poet who had published millions of copies of their book or whatever. And maybe you don't like the poetry analogy, but whatever it is that you're thinking, yeah, I, I think I'd rather make money doing this. The world doesn't care what you want to do with your time. No one wants to pay you because it's your passion. No one's going to give you that money. However, if you find a hole in the marketplace that's underserved and you begin serving it with excellence, you can free up your time for your poetry blog or for that passion hobby that you have. And maybe it'll monetize, maybe it won't, but you won't care at that point because you're paying the bills and building systems, building profitable income streams that support your dreams and those other things you want to do. That's what I'm here to say. And actually, if, if you don't mind me beating you up for a few hours with that kind of thinking and you want to hear more of it, I've got a free book. Silent Sales Machine is the name of the book. And the most recent version, I spend a significant amount of time kind of challenging a lot of the cultural messages that we hear right now that tend to push us away from where the true opportunity is and feed us lies such as, if you want to never work a day in your life, do something you love. And that's a tragic dangerous, I would argue, toxic message. No, find needs and meet those needs wherever and whenever and however you can, and you'll be rewarded for it. Don't start with an internal search for what do I want to do with my life? You could spend decades there and never get anywhere. 
find needs in the marketplace, meet those needs, and you'll become very passionate about those little green pieces of paper. We call them certificates of gratitude around here. Thanks to my good friend, Rabbi Daniel Lappin. I love that terminology. People line up to say thank you. You're going to find a lot of pleasure and a lot of motivation, and you're going to love doing what you do when people line up to say thank you with those little green pieces of paper. You're going to become an expert at it. You're going to be very passionate about it, actually. That's the journey I've been on for 20 years. The book is Silent Sales Machine. You can get an absolutely free copy by texting the word free to the phone number 507-800-0090. That'll be in the show notes as well. Rewind it if you missed that. We'd love to get that into your hands for free. If you live outside the United States or Canada, that number may not work. There's a link there where you can give us an email address. We'll fire it over to you completely free. And it's me talking through the three business opportunities that we've recognized after 20 years serving 10,000 plus coaching students and tens of thousands of other students. There's three business models that work. I'm going to talk to you about all three of them and where, where you should start, which one makes the most sense for you. But let's keep on this track of Amazon replens. You're making it more complicated than you should. Getting started on Amazon is not complicated. We start off 99% of our students with what we call replens. And if you're struggling, not finding them yet, you're probably overcomplicating it. And I can say that with confidence because again, let's use those 40 examples that I gave earlier. Those 40 examples from my own personal email account. And there's a link in the show notes. You can go see these. There's probably more than 40 examples at this point because I plan to continue adding more and more examples as I have a few minutes of my day, pop into my Amazon account, look for examples that have a good lesson behind them, show you the chart, what we paid, how often it's selling, what it's selling for, how high above the buy box it is, which if I was showing you all of our inventory, there'd be all kinds of stuff that we're selling at about buy box and it's profitable. But I'm only showing you the ones above buy box because once you understand that you can sell products on Amazon above buy box, it opens up millions of potential products that you could easily go source knowing your worst case scenario is break even, you price it above buy box and you wait for a sale to happen. Your worst case scenario is you break even. Millions and millions of listings right now that you could go put inventory against and have a great business up and thriving and rocking. So once you understand the lessons from, again, episode 554 really drives this home. Another really good one is episode 612. Talks about a three-step process with Brian and Robin Joy Olson. Once you understand those concepts, Once you see all the people who are succeeding, you see all the posts in our Facebook group, the only decision you're left with is, am I going to carve out the time to do this? Am I actually going to commit to this? If you want some accountability, we'd love to help you out. We'd love to have a half hour conversation with you about your business, your goals, how realistic it is. If you've got the time and the margin in your life, uh, the financial margin, the relationship margin, right? What do you mean by that, Jim? Well, that's like, are you going through a divorce right now? That's not the time to start a business, right? Do you need to convince your spouse that, that this is worth doing? All right, well, let's let's take our time and, and get them exposed to the community. Maybe bring them to our event where skeptical spouses come and are often convinced like, okay, I get it now. <laughs> okay, this isn't a network marketing MLM thing. Okay, I get it. Okay, these guys have been around for 20 years. I get it. Okay, these people sitting next to me, they used to have careers, uh, you know, professional careers, whatever. They've stepped into this and it's replaced their income and they meet it and they, they just get that sense of uh, the scope the scale of the opportunity and how real the people are who are doing it and that there's no hidden agenda here that's going to just sneak up and bite you somehow right so you, let's take our time let's get your let's get your spouse on board so once we've identified you've got the margin you've got the the health margin the financial margin the time margin the relational margin let's have a conversation about that and see if coaching might be a good fit because if you're ready to go far fast man we're ready to help you out doesn't matter if you're at day 1 or if you've been doing this for years We've got coaches that can help you. We've got a coaching team of 60 people. Go to silentgym.com slash book a call, B-O-O-K-A-C-A-L-L, book a call, all one word, silentgym.com slash book a call. Grab a slot on our calendar, have a conversation with someone on our team who can help you decide if the tools, resources, or maybe even the coaching that we have is a good fit for you. We love having these conversations. We're going to leave you better than we found you. It's low pressure. We're going to make sure you're well-qualified. We turn away as many people as we accept because we're not looking to generate a bunch of refunds three months from now from people who's like, oh, yeah, I had 10 good sessions, but I just don't think this is for me. We're not looking for those people. We're looking for people who 
believe in what we do around here. They may, they've listened to a good handful of episodes of our podcast. They've read some of our content. They've been in the community. They see the legitimacy of the opportunity and they're ready to commit to the process. That's who we want to coach because all of our coaches are people who have built beautiful businesses doing the stuff we teach here. We do not want to waste their time or yours if you're not well positioned, if you don't have the margin and the determination to make this happen. Well, what are some other factors that go into why you're overcomplicating this thing and why you might be ignoring a tremendous opportunity if you don't jump into Amazon the way we teach it? Is it for everyone? No, absolutely not. I realize I'm a bit like a hammer that looks around and sees everything as a nail. But when I'm surrounded every day by people saying, wow, thanks, Jim. My, I mean, my personal cell phone, I get texts because everyone who joins our coaching program, they get a text from me. And it's not unusual at all that after that first welcome text that I send them, two, three months later, I'm getting a text from them with a screenshot and a thank you note. And I love sharing those and I enjoy them myself. And I'm surrounded by that. So when I see people who are probably less qualified than you are, to be honest, Maybe they're not as smart, intelligent as you are. They're less educated. They come from a more difficult background. They didn't have the stability of family that you had. They had worse health issues than you have. They've had more challenges in their life. I mean, these are the people we interview on our podcast, but yet they've built a beautiful, successful business. You're left having to answer a very difficult question. What am I going to do with the fact that there's all kinds of people who are less qualified than I am, facing more challenges and struggles than I am, who are succeeding wildly doing this thing? And whatever you start to put on that excuse list, we're going to destroy a thousand different ways with other stories and other facts and other details. So really, it's about you looking in the mirror and deciding if you want to do this or not is what it comes down to. Are you going to give the excuses all the power? Or are you going to say, no, I'm going to take that power back and I'm going to put this to work and I'm going to do something here. I want to be a part of this community. I want to build a business. I want to start where they say I should start based on a couple decades of experience. If I believed eBay or Shopify or, or TikTok or one of these other thousand other options, building an Instagram following, if I believe that was the low-hanging fruit available to all of us based on current demographic data, big trends, the big paradigm shifts in the way consumers behavior, behave, we would be there. But we're not there because Amazon checks all those boxes. That's why we're talking about it. That's why we've been talking about it for 14 years. That's why I stopped talking about eBay about 12, 14 years ago. I started talking a lot about Amazon because Amazon became the gorilla in the room where all the opportunity is, the low-hanging fruit. Still love Amazon. Excuse me, I still love eBay. Still love Walmart. We sell in there every day. We sold 900 items on Walmart last month. I love it. We've got training coming, but it's not going to replace well, uh, Amazon anytime soon, nor is eBay. eBay is not going to catch up anytime soon. We start new sellers, new students out with the lowest hanging fruit the lowest odds of failure, the highest odds of success, the lowest financial risk required, the shortest learning curve, that's Amazon. What are the other big factors going on? Well, there's just a couple other ones that I want to point out to you. If I haven't convinced you yet that you're overcomplicating this thing, I'm going to talk about a few of the things on the horizon. Uh, if you've got any cash at all just sitting around, it is being chewed up and whittled away. The moths are destroying it, basically. That's inflation, right? We're all aware. I'm not going to get political on you. I have some very strong feelings about this. I actually often carry around with me to help illustrate the point I make on this. Uh, I've got a $10 trillion bill here from Zimbabwe. Real currency it was really printed by Zimbabwe, $10 trillion with a T dollar bill that's basically worthless at this point. You couldn't buy a pack of gum with it. It's still currency. People still accept it in some places, but it's worthless, worth a few pennies US at best. How do we get there? Government created and printed cash to help meet the obligations and commitments and promises that it had made that it couldn't fund by raising taxes. So they just printed more money and everything became ridiculously expensive as a result and it destroyed their economy. It's happened to virtually every fiat, if not every fiat currency that's ever been printed. So I have very strong opinions on these things. But Instead of having your money sitting just as money, how about if you have it sitting as physical products? Well, those physical products become more expensive over time. That's why everyone says, oh, buy gold, buy gold, right? And I'm not giving you financial advice today by any means, although you know I have strong opinions again on these things. This isn't the place for that. But you need to put your money somewhere besides just holding it as cash. I feel very confident is that money stagnates if it's just sitting in a pool. The word in Hebrew for money is the same as the word for blood. And they have a lot of overlap in meaning. 
and uh, you know, we put our money in banks. We put blood in banks. They're both fungible, right? If you see some money laying around just sitting there, that's not good. Kind of like with blood. Like if you come across a pool of blood, like something bad just happened. Like what went down here? Like something's not right. Same with cash. Cash needs to be moving. It needs to be circulating. There's another tie, right? You can start to see why the Hebrews were pretty smart. Basically, the the, the language of the Bible is pretty intelligent in, in nailing that blood and money are overlapping concepts with overlapping meanings in so many ways. When money's moving, there's life, there's health. When money's sitting, like with blood, it's just pooled, it's stopped, it's not circulating. There's death, there's something bad that's happened, there's some poor decision-making that's occurred somewhere. Tragedy, it's a signal of tragedy. So don't let your money be tragic. Put it to work. How are you going to put it to work? There's a lot of options you could use out there, but I really like taking the very small risks that are involved and buying a few units at a time of products on Amazon where your worst case scenario based on historic sell price is a break even. And your best case scenario, if you sell well above buy box, is you're going to make occasional, nice, steady, consistent sales on that product. You're not buying 50 units. You're not even buying 20 or even 10 units. You're buying three to five, maybe at the most, maybe even one or two, if it's a pricier item. And you're pricing it at a profitable price point for you and then waiting four weeks or so to see if something happens. If nothing happens, drop your price, get your money back. If it does sell, you go get another one. Next thing you know, you've got hundreds of products like that. This is not a complicated business model. Odds are, if it seems confusing to you, you've heard some bad messages. It's been overcomplicated in your head by bad news, which if you haven't figured this out yet, you could have 10,000 good news stories in a day and one weird, strange, bad story. And that one weird, strange, bad story is going to dominate the spotlight, the headlines, the Facebook group you're in, the conversations you're having. I often illustrate it this way in our Facebook group where we have thousands, there's 74,000 of us in there, thousands of us making a living all day, every day, business as normal, skipping through life, doing our Amazon business, stubbing our toe, sure, bumping our head, sure, there's challenges, there's issues. We get surprise alerts from Amazon, but we don't jump into 15 different Facebook groups and sound an alarm and bang pans with hand, with spoons saying, oh no, the sky is falling. No. We handle it. We move on with our day. We keep putting money in the bank. Thousands and thousands of people in our Facebook group all day, every day don't check in to tell everyone, hey, things are going great. But if something goes wrong, that person gets a thousand eyeballs instantly. And everyone's saying, yep, that's what I, that's why I don't do this business. And then very quietly within a week or two, it's resolved. And rarely do they come back and say, hey guys, sorry for telling everyone the sky's falling. Everything's cool now. Keep this in mind as well. I'm not trying to beat anybody up here. I understand it's it's difficult. It's challenging. It can be an emotional roller coaster to run a business, which is why we are and have been for over 20 years a multiple income stream community. If Walmart disappeared tomorrow on me, I'd be okay. Even though we sold 900 units there last month, okay, we took a hit. Amazon disappeared. eBay, my account gets shut down. One of those things, for some reason, I couldn't do this podcast anymore. For whatever reason, we couldn't do our events. For whatever reason, I was unable to write books anymore, although I, that's a hard to imagine scenario, right? Those are all streams of income that have over time been built. Now, I'm not suggesting you go build all of them. In my book, again, Silent Sales Machine, there's info in the show notes today. Silent Sales Machine talks about turning the internet into a machine that generates sales while you sleep and income streams that roll while you're doing life multiple income streams. So even for those who are the most skeptical of the skeptics or are convinced that it's just not worth the risk because someday there's a possibility that something bad might maybe in an extreme instance happen, so I'm not going to even try. My answer to them would be, why not do it and just build multiple income streams as you go? The number of people in our community, for example, who have built good businesses and then gone on to consult and help a handful or dozens. In one case, I was just talking to a guy last week. He just hit the million dollar mark. And I think it was a month, million dollar month of his clients, total sales, helping them set up their own products on Amazon. And he gets paid a cut. So he's no longer reliant on just his one Amazon account. That's where we want to start you. Those are the basic skills and the foundation that gets you into the game. But over time, why not add on new income streams? 
We teach all of these concepts in the Proven Amazon course, by the way. There's a module for everything I've talked about today. $39 a month, you get all the combined collective knowledge of over 20 years of e-commerce experience, 14 plus years of selling on Amazon. A team of about 100 of us have worked on the modules, the library that is the Proven Amazon course. There's a link at silentgym.com. So what are those big factors I was promising you? And I know I've kind of wandered around. I'm not a bullet point guy. If you're taking notes, it's kind of brutal to listen to me talk sometimes because I do tend to wander a little bit. But if you catch the major theme today, I've stuck to the theme extremely well. And that's this, you're overcomplicating things. You're missing out on what could be a incredible opportunity for you and your family if you ignore this opportunity. If you're, if it's not for you, okay, put a team in place. That's what I've done. A team runs my Amazon business. You can't start there, but you can certainly grow into that relatively quickly and have a team running your business. Completely virtual assistance, which leads me to my next point. One of the greatest points of leverage that you're probably ignoring right now is the fact that all over the world, there are people who are qualified, intelligent, technically savvy, speak English and probably multiple other language fluently. They're willing to work hard. They'd be committed to your business. They would help you make more money. And they cost somewhere between 2 to $4 an hour to get them to work hard and be thrilled for the opportunity. And I don't know if I have time right now to go into my whole well, Jim, this is not exploiting. No, that's not exploiting anyone. When you consider like in the Philippines, the average hourly wage is $1 per US. That's the average wage. That's the equivalent of the minimum wage in the Philippines. So if you had a chance to pay somebody four times minimum wage in the United States to have them work hard for you, that'd be about 60 bucks an hour, right? Do you think they'd be willing to work hard? Think you could find someone to work hard for you handling some of the menial tasks of your business for 60 bucks an hour? I think you could probably find somebody. That's how hard it is to find somebody in the Philippines. And that's how impactful it is on their life to have three, four, five dollar per hour job working to find inventory, to scour through websites, to scour retail store shelves. Maybe someone takes pictures of these shelves and you send it to them. Maybe wholesale catalogs. There's dozens and dozens of ways we've identified to find these test worthy ASINs, we call them. And this is all the basic skill stuff that we teach in the Proven Amazon course, the starter modules, if you will, where some people build multiple seven-figure businesses with just the starter modules. Some people stay right there. They ignore us when we say, hey, you've got a robust business. Maybe it's time to start thinking about other income streams and, and shoring up, you know, building a moat around this castle you've built. No, 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 it's going great. It's going great. Well, all we want to do is just this. Okay, well, there's a little unnecessary risk inherent in that. But you certainly can stay there. And we know many, many people who have. And that's fantastic. We love it. We love to see it. We love to see people build beautiful businesses. But we also know that the internet's an unpredictable place. You're playing in other people's sandboxes. The terms of service of every major website you'll ever be on or part of basically has a line in there somewhere buried on page 942 when you sign up the user agreement that says, hey, if we wake up one day and we're grumpy and we want to hit a button and make your life delete from our service. We're allowed to do that. And there's nothing you can do legally. Are you cool with that? Well, yeah. When you signed up, you signed that agreement and it says that somewhere, <laughs> the equivalent, which is why we're a multiple income stream community. But I marvel at the thousands and thousands of sellers who've built beautiful businesses with virtually zero people having been eliminated from being able to sell on the Amazon platform if they've followed the systems that we teach. We've got a very consistent track record. So we can take that risk off the table. And the bigger point I'm trying to make right now is you're ignoring one of the greatest points of leverage that we have in business right now. If you're not using virtual assistants, if you're not building a team made up of people who live in other parts of the world, working hard on your behalf, these are strategies we teach as well. You can automate your system. It doesn't have to be you doing the work. You can build a beautiful team. You can be truly impacting the lives of others who three, $4 an hour changes the trajectory of their family because their only other options are a dollar per hour. And they can get by on that, but it's not a comfortable living. You've quadrupled their income and they can live very comfortably for in the Philippines, for example, in Vietnam, many other places, three, four, five dollars an hour is a huge opportunity. And they can grow with you and you can reward them as much as you want when you start making a lot of money. You can completely make them the most financially stable family in their region, if you'd like. That's beautiful. We encourage it. Love to see it happen. So we talked about inflation. We talked about uh, we talked about virtual assistance and that point of leverage. 
Uh, we talked about how uh, shipping online continues to just rocket upward. We talked about all the success stories. Only thing you're left to do in my episode today where we've talked about how you're overcomplicating things is just to leave you with a decision point of whether you want to do this or not. Brian and Robin Joy on a recent episode talked about writing down what it is you want, not necessarily a financial goal, but what kind of lifestyle, what kind of flexibility, what kind of a life arrangement would you like to have? Write that on one side of the paper. They said, flip it over and write on the other side, the things you'd have to do to get there. And I'd like to propose that building an e-commerce business, just from a purely generic, what are the options that help me get where I'm trying to go faster? I don't care if if you're trying to open a mission in the middle of one of the poorest nations in the world and bring fresh water to that area, or you're trying to take care of an ailing parent, or you're trying to step away from a soul-sucking job that has never really quite fulfilled what you believe you were made for. You want to get away from that and be using your time for things that you care about and love, or you want to be with your family more, or you don't want to miss seeing your kids grow up or whatever you put on that piece of paper, the thing that can help you get there that I have to offer that I've seen working for the most people is building an e-commerce business. Include your family. I'll end with this one little bonus note. Sometimes people say, Jim, how do you balance it all? You've got multiple income streams. How do you balance it? It's like you're running a lot of different things. I don't balance it. I integrate it. My family's part of what I do. We've got a warehouse. Remember I mentioned we sell on Amazon, Walmart, eBay, and we, and we have a prep center where we help other people manage their inventory as well. I've got, at, right now, as I'm recording this episode, one, two, three, four of my family members working right now at our business, texting back and forth, emailing, hey, what do you think about this? So I'm, inter- I'm interacting with my family throughout the day chance to spend time together, building something together, serving others with excellence, getting paid well to do it. That's a dream scenario. We don't all go off in all all of our separate directions. Our family's integrated in. If you come to our live events, you'll see there's a role for everyone in my family. My kids have grown up. We've had 12 events now, annual events, the proven conference. You'll see my whole family's involved. A kid working a book table, a kid helping set up sponsor tables. Um, I've got kids on panels running, uh, help answer questions. You know, like Ty, our son, who a lot of you have seen grow up over grow up over the years. He's had multiple surgeries, facial issues, and closest thing we have to a special needs child around here. You know, he's deaf in one ear, but man, that kid can run my whole warehouse. And he was answering questions left and right about inventory management last year as a as a twenty year old. Just incredible, the opportunities that you have not to balance your life, but to integrate e commerce into your life and then use it as a tool to help you meet the financial and family and relational goals that you have. That's why I'm so bullish about this stuff. It's not because I think technology is cool. It's not that at all, although I think it is. I see it as an opportunity for you to meet the very real family and even spiritual uh, fitness goals. For example, I'm able to have a flexible schedule. I can get up and run. I do most days. I'm putting in several miles staying healthy. If I had a job that required me to get up at five in the morning and be somewhere by, you know, seven and I was home at six and I just, you know, weekends were it and I had to feel guilty. Am I going to stay in shape or I'm going to spend a few minutes with my kids? Right. I don't want that for me. I don't want that for you. I see e-commerce and the opportunities we represent here as a tool to help you get where you're trying to go. And it can fit into the cracks of your life. You don't have to make a 30 hour a week commitment day one. That's one of the other big things i probably should have pointed out earlier and eliminating the excuses and saying, you're making it too complicated. People sometimes say, well, you know, how much time am I going to have to carve out to do this? You know, I've only got, you know, five to 10 hours a week. That's plenty. That is plenty. This business can squeeze into the cracks of your life. Well, that's all the time I got. Hopefully I've helped eliminate a bunch of excuses. Hopefully I've helped convince you that you're making this too complicated. I've put the links and the resources in the show notes for this episode. If you want to go check those out, if nothing else, If you're brand new around here, this sounds a little too good to be true, Jim. If this is the first time you've ever heard me talk, yes, absolutely, I agree with you. Way too good to be true. Listen to 5, 10, 15, 30, 50, 400 podcast episodes, if that's what's required, of real people talking about their experience. Real people talking about how they've gone through what we train around here. Are you going to hear every person 100% of the time building beautiful businesses? Of course not. I know enough about human nature and hopefully you do too, that there's an endless number of ways that people can 
make mistakes, make bad decisions, try to think they know a better way, bad timing, life, health, relational challenges, things come along, they're serious for a few weeks and then they drop the ball and get unserious. They think other people are going to do the hard part for them. There's all kinds of things that happen. But you'll notice a pattern. The people that stick with what we teach around here very consistently go on to build beautiful businesses. So if you feel like you're qualified and prepared for that, take your time, listen to what we have to say in the other podcast episodes, listen to real people telling their stories, decide if that's something that sounds like something you could do. And we'd love to bring you along the journey and help you every bit as much as we've helped anyone else. We're here for you. We want to see you succeed. We consider you a business building warrior the moment you start the journey. And we want to help you complete that journey as we've helped so many other people meet their financial goals. Well, God bless you, business building warrior. I spoke from the heart today. Hopefully that's encouraging to you. Uh, If you feel challenged or uncomfortable, like I said at the beginning, hey, I, I warned you. There's going to be probably a little bit of cognitive dissonance going on with some people. It's like, well, I always thought Amazon was a bad idea because fill in the blank. And we've got 30, 50 different ways to destroy that excuse. And I've just dropped a bunch of them on you today. Uh, So if that makes you a little uncomfortable, hey, give us a call. Let's talk about it. Maybe there's something that I didn't point out today that's on your list of excuses for why you don't want to go down this road. Send it to me. My personal email is jimcockram at gmail or leave it as a comment on this video or on this podcast uh, episode. You know, Go to silentgym.com, contact our support team, send us your objections, what you've heard, what you've seen that makes you feel like this isn't a good idea. Odds are you've listened to some bad advice. You followed somebody who was trying to skirt the rules or get away with something that Amazon doesn't like or doesn't allow and they got in trouble for it and you've interpreted that as an indicator that this is not where you should go. Sorry that happened to you, but if you stay within the rules, you absolutely can thrive. And we've got ample evidence of that. I'm going to wrap it up here. We will have another great episode for you again very soon. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Talk to you then. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me today on today's episode. But before I let you go, I've got a special guest. Once a week or so, we bring in my good friend, Mr. Jeff Schick of jeffschick.com. He's our go-to expert for all things Amazon legal. And I love the stories he shares, the real world examples. He's got a large client base of Amazon sellers, a lot of them from our community that he serves. And he's always got something new and interesting to teach us. So Jeff, what have you got for us today? So I am teaching something about, you know, I'm a big advocate, you know, an ounce of prevention is a pound of cure. And so I'm always big about finding solutions that prevent people from having problems in the first place. And so today, what I'm going to advocate for every seller to do after they hear this episode is to go into Seller Central and do what's called an inventory audit. Now that sounds big and scary when I say it, you know, using the, you know, words like that, but it's it's actually rather simple. A common reason that people run into issues on Amazon, it can be IP claims, it can be suspensions, it can be listing violations, whatever it may be, is because sometimes listings change. So the listing that you listed on maybe three months ago, maybe a month ago, maybe two years ago, may not be the listing that you're still listed on. So how do you do an inventory audit? Well, it's it sounds complicated. It's actually rather simple. I like to say, go, first, go through your active listings. You know, if you've got you know a thousand listings in your catalog, but only two hundred in stock, let's not waste valuable time on the ones that are inactive until you sell those again. But when the ones that are active, basically, you want to go one by one. Click on each one. Look at the product detail page. You know, first look at the pr- the brand attribute. Make sure is that brand what you purchased? Is it the same? So you know, I bought a bottle of you know Dawn dish soap. Am I still listed on a Dawn dish soap listing? And if the answer to that is no, then, you know, go ahead and chuck it. Delete the listing from your catalog and recall the inventory. It's not worth the risk. Next, you know, assuming that it passed that first check, we're going to look at the title. So we're going to look at how how is it written out? Does it look like it's properly formatted? Again, does that product that's in the title match what I'm selling or is it confusing? Sometimes people run into issues because another seller goes in and edits the title. So like, let's say it's a multi-pack and you're selling you know, two boxes of dishwasher tabs, and maybe each box has a hundred tabs in it. Well, you might have listed on it, and it was a two hundred pack was what it was listed, or t- it might have said two boxes of one hundred when you listed on it. Another seller might go in and say a two hundred pack. Well, that could be confusing to buyers, so because they don't know if they're getting two hundred packages or one box of two hundred packages <laughs> or two hundred you know tabs. Sure. So, so you want to make sure that it still makes sense to what you're selling. You know, think of it from the consumer. Like if you saw this listing 
and, and dumb it down because we're smart Amazon sellers. We know how to read listings, but the average person doesn't. So dumb it down a bit and just say, if I was, if my grandmother was looking at this listing, would she know what I'm, what I'm selling here? Right. And if the answer to the title question is yes, then now we keep going. So we look at bullet points, we look at descriptions, we look at pictures, just want to make sure that everything on that listing is as it was when you first listed, make sure that there were no major changes. Other things you can use, you know, Jim, you and I were talking earlier, there are solutions out there, both paid and free, um, that you can actually monitor listings for changes. So, you know, if that's something that you're interested in, you certainly can can invest in those resources, but even doing the DIY solution still works for a lot of sellers. So, Yeah, I, I know there's tools out there and I, I don't remember what they're called. I've heard of them. A Google search would probably show it to you, but you can set up an alert for yourself. Anytime a website changes, let me know. And you just right. put an alert on that website and then it monitors and looks for any changes. And you can look at only certain sections of the website. Like, I don't care if the buy box rotates and the seller of the day changes. I don't want to know about that. I just want to know if the description and the quantity changes or any of the major details from the listing change. Please alert me. And right. you'd mentioned a couple tools. Uh, feedback Whiz, is that, was, isn't that what you said? Yeah, so Feedback Whiz, they used to primarily be a feedback company, but now they um, also do all sorts of like listing monitoring. So, And they're owned by the same group that owns Tactical Arbitrage, I believe. So, okay, gotcha. Yeah. And then Carbon Six was the other one you mentioned. Yeah, they've and, got an alerts tool as well, so that they can monitor okay. listings. So. Okay, and, and then I've seen free tools, a, a little Google search and a Chrome plugin of some kind. There's tools out there that'll let you monitor portions of a website. So you say, hey, on this ASIN, I want to monitor on Amazon for any changes on this page. Please alert me. And that way, if someone changes it from a 12 pack to a six pack, or vice versa, you can be alerted and you can make sure that your inventory matches what's being sold rather than waiting on 10 customer complaints to stack up over the weekend. <laughs> and yeah. suddenly, you know, you've got some violations from Amazon. Yeah. Great tip, man. I love it. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. That's, that's the, you know, that's, that's an inventory audit in, in a nutshell, but you know, that's, I do recommend sellers do that, you know, whenever you have time. I mean, you know, if, you know, if you've got, we used to have the saying in our family business, you have, if you have time to lean, you have time to clean. Well, Think of this as your time to clean. So, I mean, you can even, if you know, if you're watching a football game and you don't really care about it, you can, you know, bust out the laptop and just be, yep. you know, yep. one eye on the TV, one eye on the screen. Going. Well, through, we're even know, training up some virtual assistants for our community right now to to do account health monitoring, and this sounds like a great feature to add on. I mean, we could train a, a VA how to do this very thoroughly, very quickly, and right. to, so, that'd be a great thing to add into our arsenal for sure, which we I'm sure we will be doing just that. Yeah. But well, thanks for the tip, Jeff. I appreciate Absolutely. it. And just remind everyone who's listening, you can go to jeffschick.com. There's a link in the show notes today. Get on, get on his retainer program. Very inexpensive, a great investment. And uh, we're, we really love working with this guy. So we'll do this again real soon. Okay, Jeff. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. See you soon. See you.